there are a lot of models uh, using ra radiology data for diagnosis, and it seems that it's helping a lot already. Um, having said that, always the last decision needs to come from a clinician. Isabel, thank you so much for joining us today on EBMT TV. I wonder if we could start by asking, how is AI and machine learning transforming clinical trials in haematology and what advantages does it bring over traditional methods? I think at the moment, uh, machine learning is transforming the whole, not only clinical trials, but let's say clinical studies in haematology. And it's quite interesting how machine learning, uh, they are very good at predicting models like predicting non-relapse mortality, predicting overall mortality, although I have to say that at the moment it feels like the models still need to be trained and developed in a better way, but it's got a lot of advantages over the traditional methods like the classical statistical methods, like for example you are able to analyze many more variables at the same time in a large sample of, of patients and in a, I think I would say, faster way. And with AI playing that bigger role already in research, what are some of the ethical concerns that come with using AI to analyse patient data? The main concern would be about confidentiality and data protection. That would be mainly my first concern. Even when you have just like an Excel, you know, a database, you always need to anonymize that database, or let's say codified the database, in order to protect the patient's confidentiality. So there are some simple things that we need to keep doing when we use AI. And it's just trying to um, maintain those safety measurements to protect our patient's confidentiality. That is the main concern. And can you elaborate a little bit more on what those safeguards should be? in place to ensure that AI is used fairly and, and ethically in research? Definitely. I think, first of all, you really need to be up to date with the current regulations you have in, in your country regarding like data protection and data protection when you use AI. You also need to always um, follow and be aware of guidelines. Uh, there are some European guidelines, but there are country guidelines and there are also institutional guidelines. And always you have to make sure the AI tool that you are using, it's keeping all this data in a safe way. Do you think that AI could eventually be making clinical decisions for us if we look into the future a little bit further? I think not only in the future. I think currently it's helping to make clinical decisions. Recently, I was reading this article about radiology. There are a lot of models uh, using ra radiology data for diagnosis, and it seems that it's helping a lot already. Um, having said that, always the last decision needs to come from a clinician. So this can be a very powerful tool, but we can never uh, keep out of mind that critical thinking, and it's also a key point. And just finally, how are you feeling about the, the future and the potential of AI? How excited are you? And what kind of feeling are you getting about how people here at EBMT are feeling and the, and the community? Yes, I feel that uh, we have had a, a session on this and we surveyed the people in the room, and it was quite interesting because I would say 50% of the people in the room still don't use AI. Um, after we finished the session, I asked them, would you maybe be more eager to use AI more now? And most of them say, yes, we are a little bit afraid of it. But honestly, there is no way back. And we just need to uh, get ready for the present and for the future without forgetting the ethical aspects. Isabel, we'll leave it there. It's been great to chat to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.